In this video, we're going to be learning how to free transform objects in Adobe Photoshop. So I have Adobe Photoshop open and hopefully you've also got Photoshop open next to you so you can actually follow along with this tutorial. What we've got to do to start off with in order to free transform any object is make sure that the layer is selected. So we can either do that by using the move tool in the top left hand corner to which the shortcut is V and just making sure that that is selected, we can actually press on the object itself. Or you can go to the layers panel in the right hand corner. And as you can see, here is the layer, which is object. And I'll just make sure that is selected. Now, as you can see by this thumbnail, I have already created a smart object for this layer. Anytime that you do transform a layer, it is a destructive process unless you are using a smart object. This basically means that anytime you haven't created a smart object, you won't be able to go back and actually reverse the decisions you've made when transforming it. So it's always handy to create a smart object in advance, just so you can always go back and actually edit the layer yourself. So in order to actually free transform this object, all we have to do is either press Command and T or Control and T for Windows on our keyboard, or we can go to Edit and then Free Transform. As you can see, here's the shortcut reminded. And as you can see, one or two things have immediately already changed. We now have a box around our layer, which we can actually use to manipulate and transform our layer. And at the top, we've had some parameters that have been added, which actually allows to be slightly more precise with our transform. So the first thing that we can do in the free transform mode is, as you can see, when our cursor is positioned over the box itself, we can actually hold and drag and reposition our image. Now, as you can see, when I'm moving it around, you will notice that there are some of these pink lines that appear on my canvas. And these are guides that allow me to be much more precise and actually position my layer to certain points on our image. So for example, at the moment, it's snapping to the center of our canvas. If I drag it to the right, as you can see, it'll snap to this edge, or I could even snap it to the corner in the top right hand corner. If you aren't able to see those guides themselves, all you have to do is press Command and H or Control and H for Windows on your keyboard and you should be able to see them now. So I'm just gonna quickly recenter our image by pressing Command and Z or Control and Z for Windows on my keyboard. Now the next thing we can do in the free transform option is actually scale our image. So in order to do this, what we have to do are use these points that are at the edges of the free transform box. And as you can see, when we hover over it, the cursor changes to this arrow, which is pointing in two different directions. And all we have to do is hold our left mouse button. And as you can see, we can scale it in the diagonal at the moment. I can also go to the edge here and actually scale it from left to right. Now, if you want to be more precise and you don't want to actually stick to its original proportions, all you have to do is hold and drag and make sure you're holding shift on your keyboard at the same time. And as you can see, this now allows me to free transform it in any direction. You can even flip it and go into reverse and basically achieve any kind of transform that I want. I'm just gonna quickly undo that once more by pressing Command and Z. Now finally, the last thing we can do is also actually rotate our image. So in order to do this, we have to move our cursor just slightly further out of the image itself, where as you can see, it changes to this curved arrow pointing in two directions. Once again, all I have to do is hold my left mouse button and I can rotate it either to the left or the right. Now, as you'll notice when I'm rotating it just to the right of my cursor, there's a small box with a number in it. And this is basically the amount of degrees I'm actually rotating this object by. So as you can see at the moment, it's set to seven degrees. So I've rotated it seven degrees to the right. Whereas if I go to the left, as you can see, it will go to negative values. At the moment, it's set to minus 34. Now in Photoshop, the degrees work in two different ways. So if I just quickly reposition that, at the moment, it's set to zero degrees. If I go to the right, it will go all the way to positive 180, but it won't go any further in the value of degrees. Instead, what it does on the left hand side, it goes all the way into the negatives until it reaches negative 180 degrees. Now, if I wanted to be slightly more precise when I'm actually holding and dragging, I can hold shift on my keyboard, just like we had with the scale. And it'll actually snap to certain set numbers. So it'll snap in increments of 15 degrees. So as you can see, it'll go to 15, 30, and then 45, which is one eighth of a full rotation. And then it will keep going all the way until 90, which is now one quarter rotated. Now there are one or two other ways we can actually transform our object. In order to bring those up, what we can do is right click on our image. And as you can see, this small drop down appears where we have a whole range of different options. 
So if you want to actually rotate your image to a certain amount of degrees, so for example, 180 degrees, 90 degrees clockwise, or 90 degrees counterclockwise, you have these three options here, which will actually achieve that result for you. Or if I right click once again, you can also actually flip your image. So for example, flip horizontally will flip from left to right. So it will now be flipped in the other direction. Or if I press vertically, it will flip from top to bottom or vice versa. And then finally, we've also got all sorts of other transform options. So for example, warp, distort and skew, perspective. These are all options that allow you to achieve different things with the transform option. I have already made a video on how the warp transform works. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, I'll make sure I leave a link to that video in the description below. So do check that out after you've watched this video. So now we've actually covered the fundamentals of how we can move, scale and rotate our image using the cursor itself. But what if we wanted to be much more precise with all of these transform options? Well, this is where all of the numbers in the top left hand corner come into play. So as you can see, there's five different numbers at the top here, and they all contribute to one of the transform options we've just gone through. So the first two are position values, which correspond to the X and Y axis of our canvas. So at the moment, my canvas is 1920 by 1080. So it's 1920 pixels going from left to right and 1080 pixels going from top to bottom. So the position of this layer is calculated from its center point. And the center point is demonstrated using this transform option by where these two diagonal lines cross, which is right in the center here. So obviously the coordinates of the center point in relation to the canvas is 960 pixels by 540. So for example, 960 is exactly half of 1920 pixels and 540 is exactly the half of 1080 pixels going in height. If, for example, I wanted to reposition this using these values, maybe I wanted to go to the right and then drop slightly down. Well, first of all, in order to move it to the right, I'd have to increase the X coordinate in order to move it slightly further up. So for example, I could input 1500. As you can see, it's now moved slightly further to the right. And in order to move it down, I'd also have to increase the Y value. So for example, let's say 800. And now it's moved slightly further down. It could also go slightly lower, so I can move it to say 200. As you can see, it's going to be all the way at the top. Or I can move it all the way to the left by just typing in zero. And as you can see, it's now snapped to the left edge of our canvas. Now I'm just going to quickly reposition that to the center. So it was 960 for the middle, which was exactly half of 1920 and then 540 in height, which is exactly half of 1080. And the next two values that we have correspond to the scale of our image. So at the moment, I haven't actually resized the original layer. It's still set to 100% in both width and height. But if I wanted to change this, perhaps I wanted to double the size of our image, then what I'd have to do in order to double it is make it 200%. And as you can see, our image is now 200% larger. Now, as you can see, this has been applied to both the width and the height automatically. And that is because this link icon is ticked here, which means that if I change one value, it's automatically also going to change the other value. So in order to change this, perhaps I didn't want to scale the height. All I have to do is press on the link itself. And as you can see, these are no longer attached. So for example, I can reset the height to 100%. Now the height is going to change, but the width is still going to stay at 200%. Now you might have noticed, but when we actually flip the image, we were going into the negatives. So for example, if I wanted to flip the image in the horizontal axis, what I'd have to do is go to the width and actually change this value from 200% to minus 200%. And as you can see, I've now flipped the image in the horizontal axis. If I wanted to do the same for the vertical axis, I'd make this negative 100 by just adding a negative symbol to the start. It's not letting me do that. So I'll type in negative 100%. And as you can see, it's now flipped it in the vertical axis too. Now, just to demonstrate, this was also happening when we flipped it. If I just quickly press on the flip horizontal axis once more by right clicking on the image and then going to flip horizontal. As you can see, this value has now changed from negative 200 to 200%. And the same for the vertical. Now the height has also changed back to positive 100%. Now the final option that we have is rotation, which is obviously the amount of degrees that we were applying. And like I said at the beginning, it goes from zero degrees at the top to 180 degrees if we rotate it in a clockwise direction. But if we rotate it in a counterclockwise direction, it's going to start with 0% at the top, still just like before. 
but it's actually going to go into the negatives until we reach minus 180 degrees. So for example, if I wanted to rotate it 90 degrees to the right, I could literally type in 90 degrees. And as you can see, it's now rotated 90 degrees to the right. But if I wanted to go the other way, I'd have to type in negative 90 degrees, not 270 degrees. And as you can see, it's now going to rotate it 90 degrees to the left. So those were the basics of how you can actually free transform objects in Adobe Photoshop. Like I said, I'll make sure I leave a link to the warp transform video in the description below. So do check that out if you're interested. And also remember to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed the content. And make sure you also subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a new Photoshop tutorial.